Good evening. Welcome to Massey College. I'm Emily Mockler, Director of Partnerships and Programs at Massey. Massey College is on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. I want to acknowledge our duty of stewardship of this land and also the great privilege that we have to, to continue to do our work here. Journalism is a part of the lifeblood of Massey. Since the early 60s, we've hosted the William Southam Journalism Fellowships and have seen over 250 esteemed journalists pass through, pass through our halls. Since the 90s, we have hosted the, U the University of Toronto's Scholars at Risk program. And for the past 10 years, in partnership with JHR and the Fisher families, have hosted a fellowship for international journalists who focus on international rights reporting. We continue to support those that wish to come to Canada when it has become unsafe for them and their families through their work in speaking truth to power. I'm thrilled to welcome you to this special virtual event this evening in service of a great project, The Cost of Freedom, Refugee Journalists in Canada. We'll get a chance to hear from the subjects of this documentary and have a chance to discuss their individual journeys that have brought them to Canada. Before we do, I will turn it over to Jeffrey Dworkin, who will start us off this evening. Jeffrey is a senior fellow at Massey College. He was a lecturer and director of the journalism program at UTSC from 2010 until last July. Prior to teaching, he was in charge of two international news organiza organizations, CBC Radio in Toronto and NPR in Washington. From 2000 to 2006, he was NPR's first independent news ombudsman and the only broadcast ombudsman in the United States. He's a frequent media commentator on ethical issues and has recently authored an undergraduate textbook, Trusting the News in a Digital Age, as a guide for students and citizens alike to be published next month in the US by Wiley. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Emily. Um, it's just a great privilege to be here with all of you and to welcome our three journalists in exile. Um, and just by way of putting things in a bit of context, I asked a former deputy minister, what is Canada's tradition of refugee welcoming and asylum seekers? It's actually pretty impressive. At, after World War II, once the gates were opened, hundreds of thousands of people were welcomed into Canada as immigrants, but also as asylum seekers. And the latest statistic shows that uh, Canada has welcomed in 23,500 protected persons, and that will be increased in this year to 59,000. They're not all journalists, so they're not all going to take, take, take our jobs away from us. But there, it is a, a long tradition in this country of welcoming people who have had to leave their countries and have now come to Canada and, and to live and work in exile. I, I, I have such admiration for our three journalists tonight who are with us and are contributing to the, the value of citizenship in this country. Um, I don't want to expand it beyond what our three journalists have gone through, which is a lot and a considerable amount. But it occurred to me today that in a funny way, we can, we can relate. We relate in the serious way about journalists in exile, but also because as students and as teachers and as journalists, COVID has also put us in exile. We are in exile from our students, from our universities, from our news organizations, and from our, our friends and colleagues. We are now sharing with our three guests tonight a kind of distancing that hopefully will end in some important and productive way. And we are really grateful to the three of you for being here with us and really grateful to James Cullingham for coming up with this idea of doing this fantastic film that will illustrate exactly the, the, the triumphs and the, and the victories that our, our colleagues are going through. So we're really grateful, really grateful to that and to James especially for doing this fantastically important project. 
Um, so on that note, let me simply hand it over to James uh, to, and to remind our, everyone who's watching that there will be an opportunity for a Q&A after uh, our three journalists have had a chance to talk a little bit about what brought them here and how they're, how they're coping with life in, in, in Canada. So on that note, I'd like to hand it over to James Cullingham. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. <clears throat> and thank you to um, Emily and Alyssa and Natalie and the entire team at Massey College for this very extraordinary opportunity to talk about um, this project. I'm coming to you from Nogajiwanong, where the rapids end on the Adenabe, the river that bubbles like a beating heart, Peterborough, Ontario, along the Otonabee River. I'm very, very grateful that uh, the community here um, has <clears throat> supported the project. In fact, we wouldn't be here tonight without the uh, support of the Simons Trust for Canadian Studies for the, from the Course of World Issues Council, from the New Canadian Centre of Peterborough. Those are some of the local partners. I believe that in the audience, people that have supported us in kind and otherwise associated with the Canadian Association of Journalists, Penn Canada, Canadian Journalists for Free Expression, Peters Oskin College again in Peterborough. Those are among the groups that have rallied around this idea. And I am extremely gratified that, um, and we are honored that Massey has joined um, this, this effort. Thank you very, very much. I've been working on the project really since 2017 when I first met Arzu Yildiz, who at that point had come very recently from Turkey to this country. And I met Luis Nahara, who had been in Canada for some time. In the course of the month and the year, months in the year that followed, they introduced me to Abdulram Matar from Syria. And you'll be hearing from the three principal characters of the film. It was the Canadian Association of Journalists that invited me as a board member at that time to put together a panel on the threat to journalists and to bring in some journalists in exile to an annual um, meeting of the CAJ that took place in Ottawa. And that's uh, where I first heard uh, Luis and Azu tell their stories in uh, person. And we began conversations over the following months and into 2019 about how perhaps we can make a film. And um, I really, really appreciate the patience and the generosity of uh, Luis Arzu and Abdurrahman and their families in helping um, make this thing happen. There are films about the refugee experience and there are films about journalism. And um, there are many films that deal with the immediate threat uh, under fire of journalists in countries such as Turkey, Syria, and Mexico. But sadly, one could easily mention Russia, the Philippines, China, and other places where journalists are under siege. The numbers are uh, not good. They've uh, gotten worse in many places in the past decade. And um, the issue is very, very pressing. I think what this film, and I'm happy to hear um, Jeffrey mention this, I am so impressed by the resilience and the courage of um, these three individuals. And I think it, the film will raise the question about your life has been torn apart. You, your family have been threatened. You have had to flee. You are in exile. You have lost colleagues, perhaps family members. And here you are in Canada working in a second language or a third language in a very odd circumstances, extremely challenging psychologically. How does one persevere? How does one cope? And I think that that, you know, in my engagement with um, Arzu and Luis and Abdurrahman, um, 
that message comes through time and time and time again about their resilience and their ability to reinvent themselves, to continue to publish in various forms. Um, Abdurrahman is a wonderful poet. Luis does a terrific podcast in Spanish. Um, Arzu is publishing in different platforms in both Turkish and English. And their, um, their capacity to persevere, I think, is extremely um, inspiring. And um, they uh, teach lessons to all of us in the industry. I've, in the course of my career as a journalist and as a documentary filmmaker, you know, I've worked in um, South Africa, I've worked in Israel and Palestine. I produced a film that was um, filmed in Pakistan. Um, and personally, I've experienced some uh, difficult situations, but it's, 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 it's a cakewalk compared to what these women and men have experienced in their lives. And of course, they haven't suffered uh, the displacement and the rupture with family and country that um, individuals like these have. So um, I hope the film raises consciousness. I think um, it is going to um, shine a light on um, three extraordinary individuals. And yes, there will be moments when the audience is gonna learn more about the situations in Mexico, Turkey, and Syria that brought um, our principal characters to this country. But I think this film will distinguish itself because it will show these people, their families, and their colleagues continuing the work courageously and continuing to um, be a credit to journalism, to freedom of expression. Um, the film um, is being made at this stage on a very modest budget. Hopefully events like this will um, help that every single dollar helps and um, Jeffrey and I are going to um, pose a few questions to the journalists and introduce them. Um, and um, maybe they can be spotlighted as I um, thank them in turn. Um, Abdul Rahman is uh, there in uh, Richmond Hill, I believe. And uh, Arzu is in East York. Hello, Arzu. And uh, Luis is uh, in Toronto. Hello, Luis. How are you? I'm uh, very, very honored to be here with you, sir. Great to see you. Um, maybe, Jeff, you want to um, ask some questions. We have some time now, and then uh, we'll be turning it over to the audience. Right. Well, thank you, James. And again, just to say how delighted we are that you are with us and that you are here in Canada. Um, I would love to hear your sense of not looking back so much, but how, do, how, do you, how are you managing to look forward as journalists at this point? What, what, are you, what are you hoping to accomplish in the short and medium term? Long term, no, none of us know what's possible, but I, I would love to hear Starting with you, Abdul Rahman, what do you, how do you see the future in front of you at this point? Thank you so much uh, uh, to Massey College to invite us uh, for this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I have to say something about the future. We we yeah, I agree with you. We 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 have to don't uh, uh, talking about the past so much. We have to look to future, but we can't look to future if we throw our uh, past. Because why I am here? Yeah, I'm looking for peace, for protect. 
uh, I'm left my country after uh, five times uh, in the jail for uh, my opinion, for my writing and uh, uh, what I am say. And uh, the government, uh, like the government, no difference between the government or the uh, uh, terrorism uh, organ organization like ISIS or the uh, Al Nusra, they follow me and uh, put my name in the blacklist, same like uh, the, the Syrian uh, government, Assad region, uh, they wanna kill me if I continue to, to writing or, or stay in the Middle East, so, uh, in my country, in Syria or in Turkey, what, where I was uh, uh, stay around two years ago, two years before I coming to, to Canada. Uh, the future, we, we can make the future uh, uh, when we go to the justice. Looking for, yeah, for the freedom. We, me, not, not my uh, uh, problem alone, Abdurrahman Matar. No, it's all the journalists and the writers in the Middle East, in my country special. Uh, uh, nobody, uh, since uh, 50 years ago, 51 years ago, right now, nobody can talk what he think. Nobody can writing what he like. Nobody can he uh, 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 free to to uh, do meeting like this one. Before ten years ago, all the people in the Syria and in the Tunisia and Libya and Egyptian uh, in the uh, uh, Arabic uh, Spring Revolutions, they said no. Why? to stay under the terror of the government. We're looking at the future now to continue our uh, uh, steps for, to the freedom. Canada can give me the space of the base and freedom, and I can writing and can uh, talking and moving uh, free and uh, with the protect of the government, if the government give me the protect and govern me, I can do something also for the, for the people who is in the jail in Syria. We have now uh, uh, around 160, 165,000 civil, activate uh, in, in the jail in the Syria. The government, they kill around one million. We're looking for the freedom. From the Canada, I can continue with my friends, with Arzo, with uh, 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 Lewis, with James, with Jeff, all the people, they can help me and my friends to, to go to the justice. Now we're looking the, to the justice. But I have a point, not easy to be one of the community of the media or not easy to writing in the newspaper in, the, in Canada. I'm tried before several times sent, nobody answer me, nobody published. I'm published in translate to English in Bank Canada website and in the uh, 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 other uh, uh, website in English, but not a public. I'm, I have a message. I need the Canadian people hear me. I need the student in the Canada know good what happened in the Middle East, what we have. All the journal and the uh, uh, media 
in Canada and USA and Europe, they said the civil war in Syria, not civil war. The student, they have to ask him, is this really civil war? Why we have answer. The government of Syria, they uh, attack and kill all the people and down four cities, five cities in 10 years because the people want the freedom and democracy. We look at the Canada, USA, Europe for the system of democracy. And I think, Abdul, yeah. that this film is going to be, I know it's going to be very helpful in getting your presence and your ideas and your journalism out there. And that that is part of the, I, I believe, part of the, uh, the hope that we have for this film and for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shukran Khabibi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Luis. How, what, how are you looking to the future at this point? Uh, well, first, let me uh, thank Massey College, which I called my home. Um, I, I, I am an alumni of Massey College, and I am a triple threat alumni because I, I was a Southam Fellow. Then I moved in to be a scholar at risk, and also I have the honored to be designated as a Sol Ray Fellow. So Massey, it's, it's embedded in my, in, my, in my life and I'm happy to be here. Uh, future, um, I stopped thinking about the future the day that I left my country because I have no idea I have if, if, if there will be a future for me. And uh, that unfortunately continues to be the rule rather than the exception. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, last Monday, I received my fifth rejection letter from a Canadian university, the fourth from a Canadian university, the fifth from, from a university uh, on my application to, for a PhD program. So that means that I have to reinvent myself again and again and again and again and look for to something. I also stopped thinking about the future when my wife was di diagnosed with cancer three years ago. Uh, we start to living day by day and to enjoy day by day. Uh, so I, I'm sorry to rain on the parade, but or, or to be the party pooper, but I, I Again, I stopped thinking about the future. So, yeah. Well, I, I think that what we might be able to do to work with you is to help you live and see the world in a day-by-day -day way, in a way that a lot of journalists, whether they are Canadian journalists or they are journalists abroad, the future is less clear than it once was. There are so many other complicating factors going mm -hmm. on now, not the least of which is COVID. Um, once that seems to be more resolved, maybe things might show a way forward for you. But Luis, uh, you are deeply, uh, you honor us with your presence here and we will look for opportunities around us for you as well. Thank you so much. Arzu, what's going to happen? Hello, Jeffrey. Um, How are you? How are you? It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Um, it is very nice to be with you. And it's an honor to me and for all of us uh, being with you tonight. I wanted to thank you to the audience. They are joining and watching what's going on. And uh, about the future, I uh, agree with Louis. Uh, <laughs> I don't live um, 
to thinking to what's happened, what will happen in the future and making a plan. I am living with the moment which I in right now um, because we had experience your life can be changed in a 24 hours, you know, you can lost everything and start it again. I think I have a mm, two, uh, I live twice because I think I died when I was 35 in Turkey that day, which I uh, had to leave. And then I born here, November 24, 2016. This is my second life. When I came here, I have no idea where I came, what kind of country it is, because I have no idea, just a maybe one point for, as a, every woman knows, they have a handsome prime minister, that's it, you know, <laughs> nothing more. And I didn't know English very well. I cannot say it is good right now, but I have a courage to speak, you know. And um, the first time when I came to Canada, um, I keep myself very busy to thinking where should I start to learning language, finding a home, and uh, finding a job, making money, because you know, a lot of things to do. And I worked when, uh, 15 hours in a day, mm. uh, no time to thinking others what happened behind me, but the, in the midnight, before I sleep, I am sleeping in Turkey, not the Canada. But when I am waking up, I wake up in Canada sometimes, I had a dreams police um, came to my house every time. When I wake up, oh, thanks to God, I am here, not at home. And you know, before I realized that, I live in a small world, just in my country, you know, because I have no plan and idea one day my life will be changed. But I never be said, um, so these things happen to me. I always look into what is the message. I not uh, I I am uh, I wasn't born a country, you know. I born in the earth. Being a Turkish Canadian doesn't make a sense anymore for me, you know. I am belong to the world, not the country, but uh, in journalism. Uh, when I watched this short movie, you know. I think, who is that woman? Am I? Because, you know, I saw the Louis and Abdurrahman and me, all the same person like that. Maybe we grow up different countries in a different culture, but we all have the same character. Not the, your job, um, create a future for you or you know, the, your character is your destiny. We are all the same character. Uh, I work um, more than eight years as a court reporter. The ju um, journalism is not uh, writing a story, true story. It's very important point for the, all the people who live all around the world. The journalism, if you write a true story, you can seek the justice. If you seek the justice, you can seek the democracy. If you seek the democracy, democracy make yourself. Everything connected each other. And the journalist has the lots of responsibility. We cannot think of what will happen one day. We are all crazy, you know, with our job. I don't care. I just keep going to what is the truth. I just keep going to seeking justice. Now I am happy to part of the um, a refugee family being a part of the refugee family because we are the borderless. We have no ID. And this is the, you know, amazing things. This is the real freedom. Uh, if you lost everything, how I can scare, make you scared? And I realized that. I am more powerful than powerful than I think. Now, Thank you. Right, so good. that's wonderful to hear that. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you. 
Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. That is great. And uh, Je- maybe last thing, Je- Je- Yes, Je- please, please. Why we accept the part of the that documentary, you know? This is not our story. This is the old journalist story who was killed by the government or the state in Eritrea, maybe Mozambique, Bolivia, and anywhere in all, all around the world. We are, the, this story belongs to all of them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Arzu. Thank you. James, what are your, some of your thinking, has your thinking evolved in the making of this film based on your conversations with the three journalists? Yes. Um, you know, they're my teachers on an ongoing basis. And um, I think it's very instructive to see um, how they are in different ways um, connected to uh, the places that they came from and to those communities, um, both uh, under threat in the countries, but also in the, in the uh, diaspora. Um, I've been very happy to be able to attend before COVID and a couple times uh, uh, virtually since to um, cultural events of the uh, Arabic diaspora that um, Abdurrahman and his colleagues are involved in that feature journalism and uh, literature and music and poetry. And um, the situation in um, Turkey is dire. And there are uh, a number of uh, Turkish um, expatriates people in exile in the United States, in Germany, in Canada, in France, in Scandinavia that um, Arzu is connected with. Um, And sometimes they get together virtually. Um, And that's been interesting. Um, Once again, COVID permitting, Luis and I hope to go to Mexico um, together um, because um, Canada Council kindly supported the project in the development phase. And part of my research uh, was in Mexico, which I um, had been um, talking to journalists in uh, Mexico City, in Veracruz and Oaxaca already. And of course, uh, Luis is from the North, from Juarez. But um, people at uh, the wonderful news organization, Jornada, at uh, Articulo 19, Um, and others um, are engaged with trying to help Mexican journalists continue the work that Luis was doing and continue it safely. And uh, part of what we might do um, is take that journey together to go and follow up on some of the uh, young journalists who are uh, working um, in Mexico. And uh, so Um, You know, my eyes are open and um, we have a path to complete the film, Um, but I'm eager to learn more from each of the three principles as as we go forward. And I'm very excited by the publishing ventures that uh, each of them in different ways, and I'm sure it's very frustrating, but um, we will show them actively continuing to get their their voices heard. Terrific. That's terrific. Um, Have any of you had a chance to sample Canadian journalism? It may seem rather thin (laughs) compared to uh, the the substance of what you've been doing before, but do you see any areas of in Canadian journalism that you have found particularly useful for your own journalism. Abdul Rahman? You are, you're, mu- you're muted, Abdul Rahman. Up oh, there yeah. you are. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, 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 your question uh, slowly, please. Yes, is there some aspect of Canadian journalism that you have found particularly useful to you? Newspapers, broadcasting, what is your media 
what what kind of media are you looking at here in Canada? Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Uh, 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 the uh, newspaper first. Uh, I'm trying to writing a newspaper, and uh, now uh, they, uh, all uh, all of them is website. Sure. I'm uh, also I'm try to to start a production uh, uh, a newspaper uh, uh, web, website with radio and like that, but I didn't get uh, uh, any way to do that. Uh, I'm writing to the uh, art console, and they they said uh, it's uh, not our interest. Uh, we can't uh, uh, support this program. You have to look at uh, other uh, company, uh, any uh, organization to, to, to govern it you, uh, like uh, a website or radio or something. Yes. Or a magazine, or a magazine in, in, in a multi, multi-language magazine, like Canada, uh, multicultural, multi-language, we have we have uh, uh, to, to, to do something different as a refugee. I think one of the issues that uh, journalism in Canada is grappling with is to try to figure out a way in which uh, Canadian media can be broader, can look at more issues in a significant way. And uh, that is the challenge, as I've told my students, that they need to get into news organizations to make them better, not just to continue the way they have been. Arzu, what are your, what's your thinking about uh, journalism in Canada? How have you found it? You know, the, um, they work. Um, uh, I, I try to follow the radio program um, when I drive, um, when I work as a food deliverer, you know, and then, Radio program is amazing. And then when I listen to them, they are talking about the different stuff we now are talking about in our country because we are busy to prison and the operation, something like that. They are talking about the books and that they meet with the authors. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. You know, the, it's a relaxing thing. And then they also scientists, uh, scientific reporter. We don't need the scientific reporter, court reporter, police reporter, and the some, something because the, our situation is very different than here. But one thing, when I came to Canada in the first time, uh, there was an organization, CAG. Uh, yes, CAJ. <laughs> yeah, uh, made it. And then that organization, we meet with the James to the same well. Um, I am talking about the, what happened to me and the, what is the situation in the Turkey. There is a lot of journalists and the audience, they all listen to us, what I am talking about. But the next day, I check the newspaper, there is no news. This is the news, you know. If I catch the, some story like mine or Louis or Abdurrahman, I never sleeped that night uh, to writing it because it is the reflection, you know. It was a surprise for me. And then now I started to working with the uh, new Canadian media. And then uh, I joined the Vibina with them. Uh, it is very useful for me because I understand how they work. But uh, in my country, for example, the, there was a the government, I never used the, uh, what the state says, you know, that they, I never talking with the their sentence because we are the journalists, we cannot say anyone that's terrorist, you know, this is the rules in our newspaper. And then, um, for example, the government announced one of the group, they are terrorists. I should be interviewed with them. What are you thinking about? What is your, you know what I mean? This is the different situation, but this, in the Canadian journalism, it's very wonderful because we need uh, uh, which book is bestseller, for example, you know? We need the information, not the prisoner's story, said no story, but how we can change this word and a part of the word uh, in the Syria, maybe. 
almost right. Yeah, more than 10 years. They live within the civil war. Too many people dying on the river, sea, somewhere else. And then there is no justice that, in the same situation. How we fix it? But we need to hear the beautiful issues sometimes. They provide right. us. And then it is very useful for us because why? We bring a lot of pain with us. Fantastic. Continue Thank you. our life. You yes. know, reading a book and then watching movie, drinking coffee, go to outside, something like that. I love it. Relax. I hope one day my country maybe will be because they bought a lot of prison right now. My editorship, Ahmed Altan, he's a well known novelist, and our reporter, Mehmet Paransur. Many of my friends in a political prisoner right now. Uh, I live with the shadow of them in front of me. I cannot uh, continue my life to, you know, the forgetting how the situation is. Right. Arzu, thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, Luis, yes. any observations that you might have on which aspects of Canadian media you found useful? Well, um, I can. I, I I have to divide my answer in in, in two ways. Uh, one is uh, my response being a journalist as a source of information for Canadian media, which uh, when the war in on drugs in Mexico was like super super bad, two thousand eight, two thousand eleven ish. Uh, I was. Uh, I, I I I I was. Uh, engage with the Canadian media as a source of information, right? Interviews, probably Arzu and Abraman too, like interviews. Uh, I had the opportunity to write op-eds for the Toronto Star, um, Globe and Mail and National Post. Um, but then I have to, that's, that's one, and, and that's kind of very uh, opportunistic, if you want to say so, because when, when things settle down in Mexico, well, nobody cares uh, about me. Um, and, uh, and I understand that. And actually, I have, uh, I, I, well, let me, let me tie that into my second part of the, the, the response. Uh, and the second me here in Canada is the journalist as a colleague. And in that sense, I had the opportunity to work six months for the uh, Toronto Star with this uh, failed project on the, the tablet project. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, I was <laughs> one of the, I, I think it, I was the first group who was uh, uh, laid off. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, among the many uh, list of unsuccessful uh, attempts to, to get education here, uh, I also applied to, or, or, or try to talk to people in, in Carton and Ryerson to get a master's in journalism because I said, well, maybe with Canadian education plus my experience, I can uh, involve somehow in journalism here. Unfortunately, both institutions told me they don't have a place for me for several reasons. Um, so then I had the opportunity to work for the STAR six months. Unfortunately, the project failed. And uh, of course, my, if you are comparing me with people who studied and did their majors in English, I'm super behind, like super behind. Uh, however, I, what I tried to do, and unfortunately I, I didn't succeed, I didn't succeed in that, was to, okay, use me, use me in a, in a good way. I can write, uh, a column every month about Latin America because that's my criticism about Canadian media. Uh, right, right. Latin America is not as sexy as Africa or Middle East for Canadian media. Hmm. Basically, Canadian media don't care about what happened in Latin America. Only when something really bad happens in Mexico or Colombia or whatever, they they maybe something. But if something happens in Africa or Middle East, there's, of course, I understand there's, there's interest, there's a community. I'm okay with that. But 
if if you want to promote something, if you want to promote diversity, if you want to engage, and you have people already inside, well, take advantage of these people. I think but, that I think you put your finger on a, a problem of how narrow Canadian journalism can be, Luis. Uh, we are getting close to wrapping up, so I want to take a couple of questions uh, questions from from the the public, from the audience. Um, there's one here about from Peter Biro, uh, who asks, um, do you find, do you, the, the journalists find that uh, Canadians are appropriately recognizing the facts of your lives and your, and your conditions? And uh, Mr. Biro uh, says, I ask because our own society is at this time preoccupied with a very different kind of human rights project, that is to say, equity, diversity, and inclusion. These are the sort of personal issues of identity politics that Canadians seem to be very much uh, connected with. Is that, do you think that that's something that you would be able to address in your own journalism? Uh, Arzu, what do you think? Um, I think that, uh... You know, when you're telling the story, it is easy to say it. But when you test it, it is very different. And uh, I realized that Canadian people, when they watching the news from the, for example, the Pakistan, there was a bomb attack. Oh, this is the Pakistan, can be, not can be, you know. It is about the humanity, reflection. You never accept that this is the normal for the Pakistani people. You should be, try to find a way to stop it not the watching it, you know, empathy. It is the key word. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. This is the most important thing also the, for our job. What we telling about, we, you know, when I write a news, I always use my heart. I never care what the government people say to me. I am not the artist or singers. I just focus on what is the truth is. Never mind the other things. And I listen always to what the, my heart told me. I am writing like that. And when I left my country, I, le I left to my um, two children of mine. But mm. in the old way, when I came to Canada, the old way, I found a lot of children. Now, I, you cannot imagine how many children I have. I am still keep in touch with them. Because, uh, for example, when I went to refugee camp in Greece, there, was, uh, there were a lot of child in the camp. They uh, lost their mothers. I found the children, they found the mom, and then we are a family right now. And we are still keeping touch when they have a girlfriend texting me, hey, what do you think about this girl? She looks beautiful, right? <laughs> you know? I share the exciting things, everything what's going on, and the journalism. I never stopped uh, being a journalist. When I work a pizza driver, uh, I just uh, try to find what is the story in here. I wrote a book about it. In Tur I almost published it in Turkish, and then we started to write uh, a book with together um, writers in exile group, Louis Abdurrahman or the uh, seven journalists more. There is always a way if you want to find it. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, absolutely. That's, I, it, it's important, I think, that we have some kind of hope for the future uh, in, in all of our journalism. I have a question here from- Just a uh, yeah, Please, please. I just lost what I have from the past, but I never lost my soul. You know, my soul still with me. I cannot change myself. This is a life, short life. I try to put what can I find it, you know, the full. I want to be full life in a short time, doing my best. And then when I say the goodbye, uh, maybe one of them find the master. Oh, look at this woman. You know, this is the important things. 
I am not living for the, this generation. This is the stupid things. One day they will understand us. Thank you, Arzu. Thank you, that's lovely. Uh, Luis, a question from um, Chris Lowry. He says that he doesn't understand why Canadian media is not interested in Latin America. What do, you, what do they say to you when they reject your ideas that it, Canadians won't understand the story? Is that what you're hearing? Um, why they don't care? I have no idea. Uh, no, I remember one conversation with, a, with a, an editor at the Star, and I said, it's amazing for me to see how well do you know pop culture in North America, in the States. You know everything about rappers and singers and artists and weddings and divorces and everything, but you have no idea the massacres in Mexico, in Colombia, in Guatemala. You have no idea. You have no idea about the tragedy of migrants walking across three countries looking for a new life in the States. Uh, do they reject my ideas? Mm, basically, they ignore me. That's what I can say. Okay, well, maybe this film will help the editors to stop ignoring the stories that you, are, you want to tell. That's, that's my hope. And uh, James, do you have any suggestions at this point now about how the public can, can help in the completion of this film? Pavel can help by donating. Um, we have put ourselves in a position to make this film um, with some institutional support, but with more support from committed individuals and from uh, small academic units and uh, community organizations that believe in um, the struggles that these amazing people have gone through and are concerned about the future of journalism and of press freedom and of the safety uh, of journalists, not only in Turkey, Mexico, or Syria, uh, but otherwise. You know, we are active on social media. Tamarack Productions is working um, with Paradigm Pictures in Peterborough, and uh, there'll be a slide up with um, some information. But I think um, it would be um, great for people to stay in touch, to donate if they want to, to see that their organization, if it has the means or their academic community wants to see the film, we will be ready to start sharing it in the fall of this year. And um, essentially, you know, I hope that one of the things the film will achieve, just to get back to the question um, that Luis was grappling with, you know, we need to open our hearts and minds as Canadians, and that applies to journalists as well. It's a big world out there. And some of the countries that we are routinely fascinated with, obviously the United States at the top of that list, that's not the entire world. Those aren't our only neighbors. And uh, the kind of empathy that our zoo is talking about needs to be extended um, well, well beyond the short list of countries that Canadian media are generally interested in. So if the film helps raise some consciousness in that regard, and if it helps um, make it more possible for Canadian journalism to be open to various voices and various experiences, um, I think that would be uh, part of uh, its success. So Tamarack Productions, and um, you can contact, if you want to make a contribution directly, tamarackp at gmail.com. The slide's going to come up. I also want to mention the wonderful Kawartha World Issues Council, or QUIC, in uh, Peterborough, which has um, given us access to its charitable um, status. Um, for uh, donations of uh, more than a thousand dollars. But the money we've raised, almost all of it is in um, smaller contributions. And believe me, every contribution is welcome and it will help complete the film and it will help 
in the reinvention of Luis Nahara, Arzu Yildiz, and Abdurrahman Matar. Fantastic. Thank you, James. And uh, I just think if there, uh, Margot Margo Kelly, uh, who I think is uh, someone I worked with uh, some time ago, uh, uh, suggests that maybe we need to create a kind of a workshop to help um, these journalists in exile understand how what kinds of stories can be pitched in a in a better way and how we can help them do the kind of journalism that we know they're so capable of doing. So, Margot, thank you very much for that suggestion. We'll figure out a way, maybe post pandemic. Um, uh, Luis, you have a you have a question or a statement. Yeah, just something brief because I don't want to sound uh, ungrateful. Uh, despite this, the general circumstances that I, I faced uh, since I've been in Canada, there's marvelous, wonderful people here, journalists with a, with a huge sense of solidarity. And I can and and I don't know if I if it's because of that or or through that, but most of them are associated with Massey. And I can tell you really quick, uh, Michelle Shepard, Jim Rankin, uh, Peter Edwards from the Toronto Star, who kindly invited me to, to, to who honor me to co-write a book with him. Uh, uh, Marina Jimenez, who was at the, the Globe and Mail, um, Rob Creef from the Toronto Star, uh, Sean McAuliffe, uh, uh, Lee Pitts from CBC, Liz, Liz uh, from, from uh, CBC too. So th there's, there's generals, there's kind people around here. Uh, unfortunately, there's there's the few and there's there's a system and 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 just to close uh, when I think about our stories and and we all have said somehow in a different way uh, unfortunately if you look our stories individually are encouraging uh, amazing brave a lot of adjectives you can add to our stories but when you look when you put 10 15 20 50 100 uh, stories in the context of Canada and the refugee system, those stories became e evaporate because there's a lot of things to think about it. And now, as you said, there's there's a new way of thinking now. So I'm I'm, I'm really happy that James has this idea to, to 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 remind Canadians, okay, there's there's people here who the stories that we need to listen and and, and we think about we, we need to think about it and, and yeah, it, that's what I want to say. Thank you, Luis. Uh, um, James, I'll get to you in one second, but Arzu has her hand up. Arzu. You know the things. I think uh, they don't need the, our story, but the Canada or the, another country need the global journalism section. Because, you know, uh, we have a lot of experience. We are ready to share it. My story, James told, and the others, we are all the same situation. Journalists or the older refugee has a very important story. Everyone has a story. But uh, for the journalism, for example, I work as a court reporter. I saw a lot of things and uh, too many corruption, including the government and the member of the government, uh, uh, pre president stands also. And I write illegal gun trade made by the Turkish intelligence agency. I saw that a lot of people when they, they arrested how their parents feeling and the, how you create the church reporter, you know the news. This is very important things for the journalism students and the journalists. We, yeah, Marshall McLuhan, right? He says that we live in a global village, but we still doesn't make it a village. We just uh, divide it as a country just focus on what is going on to our country. But the, a lot of problem needs to be tell each other. We can be strong be together. And the, you know, we can be, has a power to stop the, what the bad situation is. Exactly, exactly. Um, James, you, had, you have a thought? I just wanted to um, thank Margot for her suggestion um, of the idea of, um, uh, you know, a, a, a community online uh, talking about these issues, but also uh, my friend and former colleague at Seneca College, Kennedy Duaco, 
uh, reminded us all of new Canadian media. And I, I think that uh, Arzu did mention her association with new Canadian media, but those folks uh, are, are trying hard to, to create space and to make, um, uh, to make it more possible for journalists arriving, um, writers in exile to get published and to get the kind of support they need to express themselves, perhaps in English or French if they want to. Um, and the Canadian Journalists for Free Expression and others have invited the government of Canada to um, increase the quotient of um, journalists, uh, threatened journalists um, in Canada on a yearly basis. I don't believe there's an official response to date, but they're looking at that request that was uh, forwarded uh, late in 2020. So we'll be watching that um, very carefully as well. Terrific. Um, I think this has been a wonderful discussion. It, it, it fills me with hope and uh, it gives me more things to, uh, for my next book, which is The Future of International Reporting. So I think I'll be, I'll be back to all of you to discuss this. Um, I want to also thank uh, Luis Abdulrahman and Arzu for sharing with us their, their experiences. We are so grateful uh, to have you here in, in Canada with us. Um, we're also extremely grateful to uh, uh, Nathalie Desrosiers who couldn't be with us tonight but to the Massey people who have organized this so brilliantly. Um, and uh, we are very grateful for this as a very powerful step in the process of getting these stories out. This is really terrific. Uh, thank you again. And um, I'll hand this back to Emily. There she is. Thank you all, um, Luis, Arzu, and Abdul Rahman, for your, your vulnerability in, in sharing these stories with us. Thanks uh, to Jeffrey for moderating and to James. I think this is really a, a truly an exercise in consciousness raising. So I can't wait to see the full feature. And I'm sure Massey will be hosting a screening in the fall. I'd like to just say a quick thank you to our production team, Alyssa Ginsberg and Matt Glanfield, and uh, to all of you for joining us this evening. So take care and be well. Thank you.